In this video, we'll continue looking at the process for building the storyboards for the pipelines animation project and go into some basic scene planning and staging and then do a little bit of review on some animatics that I've done in the past and why they did or didn't work. For the pipeline storyboards, you'll notice that there's a paper texture behind everything. I actually scanned a piece of cardboard and put it into my storyboard frame as a base to work from instead of the gray. You know, I, I just do it to make things look a little different. So I create a new group. I create a color burn on that group right here and I call this 001 and this is my starting frame. And then I put a new layer in there and I select a gray. I actually don't use a black. I select a gray and I start drawing. And so you get this interesting orangey, orangey color that the paper sort of shows through on. And if you actually set your flow, to flow lower and your opacity lower, you can start creating shading and different, you know, just, just a different look. And it, and it can be, sometimes it can be pretty awesome. This is actually a great stage for going back to those research photos I grabbed earlier and bringing them into the scene because I need to start planning the actual scene and the shots that are going to follow. I can see from looking at, looking at this, like, th these are all the, pipe, the main pipeline systems I need to show and I'm going to need to show the all the drains and everything for this. I don't need to show the shower specifically. That's not really one of the goals of the piece. This may be a bathroom without a shower in it. I want to keep the scene as simple as possible. So one thing I can do before getting too carried away is actually plan out the scene so I know what the bathroom looks like. And then I can plan my shots a little better. If I were to maybe just really quickly, I might draw, let's just grab a black for now. I'm going to draw a quick overview of the bathroom. So let's just, uh, and this will be this will be the end here. This is where the camera is going to be looking into the bathroom like this. And let's just I'm going to lay out this bathroom here. So I think with this bathroom, I'm going to put the toilet over here. So I'll put the toilet here. That'll be the toilet, and I'll put the sink over here because I want to really be able to separate those pipes so that when we look at them, it's quite clear where you know which pipes are going to what because that is the whole theme of this piece is to show where the pipelines are and what they do and how they work and I'm not putting a shower so I really just have two major pipe sets to work with so I know we're gonna shoot most of it from here we may actually I may get a few shots from from here or from behind but I'm gonna probably try to stay on the character as much as possible and obviously I'll probably need to add some little things like a towel rack or you know toilet paper maybe not you know maybe the toilet paper is behind the toilet and you can't see it light fixtures would be nice but that's all scene detailing stuff that I don't really need to worry about but this is the main point of the scene and is there a door to this bathroom where you come and go I don't know you know maybe it's on this side and we just don't see it so all of these little detail considerations might seem a bit superficial and unnecessary, but I actually find it really helps me with staging and blocking, keeping track of my characters, keeping track of the environment, and knowing the limitations of the set that I'm working with. Now we're working from the side view. I'm just blocking out how the bathroom will look from the side based on the drawing I did before. This is again, this will help me stage the scene. And I'm just adding the pipes and everything since it is a pipelines video and I need to have all the pipes visible. I'm sort of planning how I might tackle that in the actual set. I don't want to get too far into this stuff because this is depends really on the project that you're working on. But essentially what I'm doing here is planning. This is the pre-stages to really storyboarding a scene. And there I've realized I need a little stool that she can get up to. And now here I'm actually building some storyboard panels. I'm using the gray brush with the color burn pass put on the folder. And I'm just drawing on top and filling things in. And I've expanded that scene and made it bigger so I could zoom in on the camera and look closer. And I'm just gonna draw the little girl in here. And for this, this time, instead of using animation layers, I'm actually going to just turn the opacity of this layer down and draw her head at three quarters. Since I'm not doing an animatic yet, but I do want her head to turn, I'm just going to do it this way. So I just draw her in, in the new position. And then once I'm done, I'm going to duplicate this whole group. I'm gonna duplicate this out, rename the, rename the layer, and then I'm just going to delete the duplicated frame. And then now you can see I can just swap between the two of them and I have an animated layer. 
All right, so the last step before moving into an editing package to put the animatic together is saving out all these images. I've just put together this quick little file, so I have five images. Usually I'm running more along the lines of 75 to 100 to 200. So what I do is I turn off all the layers, and the fastest way I figured out to do this is to use the save for web function. Uh, because it, if you just go save as, it always returns to the source folder that you're in. So if I had a new, like let's say I had a new folder here called frames to just for the sake of argument, and I wanted to save it as a JPEG, and I want to call it 001, so that's all right, that's all, that's what I want, and I save this, and okay, great. But now when I go to do frame two, and I save it again, save as, I'm back in this folder again, and I have to go back to frames two, and then I have to set this back to JPEG again, I have to go 002 and save it manually. If I use the save for web function, which is control shift alt s all at the same time, what I can do is I can do all my settings, my quality settings right there, I press save, I go to frames two, and I'm going to replace 001, replace, okay, and then now I can press that again, and 002, it remembers the folder I was in, and I can move very, very, very quickly. 003, there we go. Save, 004, and 005. So that's essentially what I do. I, just, I, I put them all together, save them for web, and that way I can move really quick all the way through 100 of them in a matter of a few minutes. And yeah, it's the best way, it's the best way I find to work for those. The next stage of building an animatic is taking all those images that you've made and bringing them into an editing package of your choice. Something like Premiere, Final Cut, Avid, or even iMovie can be used. So you just import the images and start lining them up one after the other and changing the length that they're on the screen until it feels right and it tells the story you're trying to get across. This is also a really good stage to switch out images and fix things because the movement is fairly quick. You don't build a whole scene and have discover that you've run into a major problem. In these particular storyboards, I really fleshed out the actual paintings. I'm not usually this detailed. Usually they're just really quick line drawings, but the client really wanted to see in more detail what was going on and what they could expect. So it was necessary for me to go a little further with this. I've gone really far with animatics before. They can go anywhere from simple line drawings all the way to fully animated scenes where cutout characters essentially move through the environments. Uh, it really depends on the level of the production. The thing about animatics that is important to remember is they don't always communicate the pacing very well. Sometimes when you're using really simple drawings, the eye reads all the information really fast and the scene feels like it's too long. But when you actually do the full render and you have everything in there and all the color and the detail, if you were to play the two scenes the same amount of time, the scene with all the color and detail would all of a sudden seem too short. When I did the animatic for the CO2 piece, I found that I had moved way too quickly through everything. As you can see in the city scene, it just races by. But in the actual piece, I needed time for the character to act and the character to take everything in and also for the viewers to take everything in. And in this animatic, we just race right through all of that and there's really not the time to take in what's supposed to happen. In this particular project, I was really off and because the project, it didn't matter if we went over three minutes that much, it didn't really affect the final outcome. If we'd been doing something for broadcast, that would have been a different story. Uh, what it really boiled down to is a lack of experience on my part. I really didn't know how long we would have to look at something to really take it in. And we sort of just raced through the animatic to try to make all the information squeeze into this small amount of time, ultimately finding that it didn't work. The other thing that we didn't properly acknowledge at the time was the amount of acting that the main character would need to do in order to become endearing to the audience. We had to spend a certain amount of time on the character's face to really get their emotions and to figure out what they're thinking because the character doesn't talk. So what it really comes down to is that timing is everything. If you don't give the scene and the characters the time that they need to communicate to the audience and to tell their story, all the animation and all the beautiful work in the world will ultimately be for nothing other than a pretty demo reel. In the next video, I'm going to go into Photoshop and show you how I did the basic designs for the Pipeline's character, preparing her to become a puppet that would later be used in After Effects.